This is another video that I made recently, and I'm redoing this story because I had found some more information on this, and I wanted to remake this. This is the story that began in December of 1996 when a groundskeeper at Pleasant Valley Memorial Park Cemetery in Annandale, Virginia, discovered a woman's body. She was found in the section designated for infant burials, but not near a particular grave. The unidentified woman was found with a small 8-inch Christmas tree. When her identity could not be determined, she was deemed the Christmas tree lady. The woman was described as Caucasian with copper-red hair, standing about 5 feet tall. She was believed to be somewhere between 50 and 70 years of age at the time of her death. Her autopsy report revealed she had alcohol and Valium in her system at the time of her death. She was discovered with a plastic bag over her head along with two $50 bills, one for the coroner and one for the cemetery. There was a note accompanying her body that read, Deceased by my own hand. Prefer no autopsy. Please order cremation with funds provided. Thank you, Jane Doe. Investigators suspected the death was a suicide and the official cause of death was deemed to be suffocation. Detectives from Fairfax County Police Department Code Case Squad spent years tracking down clues about the woman known only as Christmas Tree Lady. They compared her physical description with numerous missing persons cases, but were unable to find a match. In 2000, a colorized sketch of the woman was produced in hopes that it might lead to someone recognizing her, but the sketch did not produce any leads to her identity. With all leads exhausted, the Fairfax County Police Department, this is a, a forensic DNA testing lab they reached out to them with the goal of using advanced dna testing to try to identify this woman in january of 2022 firefax county detectives sent physical evidence to scientists using forensic grade genome sequencing to develop a genealogical profile for the unknown woman Genetic genealogist Carla Davis began research necessary to produce investigative leads. In 2022, investigative leads were returned to the detectives and led to a connection with a family member of the unknown woman. From there, the investigation led to additional family connections. A DNA sample from a close relative confirmed a match and this con confirmation collaborated by conversations with long-lost siblings. The woman, who was only known for almost 25 years as Christmas Tree Lady, was found to be Joyce Marilyn Meyer Summers. She was originally from Davenport, Iowa. She was the oldest of five siblings. Meyer was 69 years old when she was found deceased. Family members believe Myers may have moved to the Virginia area sometime in the mid-1980s. At the time of her death, she was not reported missing and she did not have any family in the immediate area. Although she was not reported missing, her family had spent quite a few years looking for her and had even hired a private detective. It appears that she did not have any children. In an agency press release, Major Ed O'Carroll of the um, Major Crimes and Forensics at Firefax Police Department said after decades of wondering what happened to their loved one, Joyce's family finally found peace. The truth of the matter is, is that this woman had been estranged from her family for quite a few years. She had led a productive life, and at some point, um, she became estranged from her family, accusing her mother and uh, other family members of abuse 
This divided the family. Other siblings say this never occurred, that she made this whole thing up in order to write and sell a book. And they just kind of lost touch with each other. No one knows why Summers took her own life in the way that she did or why she chose uh, the cemetery and the, and the children in the area where children were buried, babies were buried, to take her last breath. It was clear that she put a lot of thought into how she would die. The family had looked for her for years. They were still looking for her after she had died, but none of them knew about her death. I am relieved to know that nothing really horrible happened to her. It sounds like something she had been planning. This was from a family member. According to police, the officers were called on December the 18th to Pleasant Valley Memorial Park when a worker there found a woman's body lying on the ground next to a small decorated Christmas tree. The woman was nicely dressed in a red silk shirt and blue sweater with blue knit paints and an all-weather Eddie Bauer hooded jacket. She had spread out a clear plastic sheet and placed the Christmas tree on top of it. She then apparently laid down, turned on a tape player, and began to listen to a comedy cassette through a pair of headphones. The woman produced from her backpack a plastic bag with masking tape. With the tape, she secured the bag over her freshly done auburn hair, and then she died. The woman's body was still warm when she was found shortly thereafter at around 9 a.m. that morning. Two envelopes with the woman's body, according to police, one envelope held two $50 bills, one for the coroner and the other for the cemetery. The second envelope held a couple of typewritten notes. Now I lay me down to sleep, soon to drift to the eternal deep, the first note read. And though I die and shall not wake, sleep sweeter will be than this life I forsake. The second note gave instructions for her final arrangement. Deceased by my own hand, it said. I prefer no autopsy. Please order a cremation. Thank you, Jane Doe. Her death was ruled a suicide. Um, they did perform an autopsy on her, and they found that she had Valium and Brandy in her system with a blood alcohol level of 0 0.14. A Brandy flask was found and her backpack also held two empty bottles. I'm assuming that they're saying it was brandy. Detectives, cold case squad, spent years tracking down clues about the woman known only as Christmas Tree Lady. They compared her physical description to numerous missing persons cases, but they were unable to find a match. In May, those leads were given to detectives who tracked down a suspected family member of the woman named David Meyer, age 88, of Virginia Beach. He was one of her two brothers. Meyer was unable to say for certain that it was his sister in the drawing. However, he said it had been about 50 years since he had seen her. She only had one remaining sibling other than this brother. She had one other remaining sibling who lived near Phoenix. She identified her sister and said she knew by 1,000% that was her sister. She told investigators that her older sister had been gone from the family's lives since the 1980s. After attending Iowa State University, she moved to Los Angeles and got a job working for Seventeen Magazine. She was very creative and very smart, her sister said. She was very artistic. In the 1950s, she began teaching second grade at a Catholic school. She struggled with this job as she had no background in education. She was very meticulous, staying up until the wee hours of the night, doing her lesson plans. 
Around that time, though, Summers began to see a psychiatrist. This was a move that would ultimately divide her from her family. At that time, psychoanalysis was all about blaming the family, especially the mother. It sort of estranged her from her family. A confrontation with their mother in the 1960s fractured Summer's ties to her family. Though her sister continued to write to Summers, the older of the two rarely said much in reply. She eventually moved to Seattle, where she married a man named James Summers. The couple divorced in 1977. From Seattle, she then moved to Tucson, Arizona, where she lived in a trailer park. All four of her younger siblings traveled to visit her in the 1980s, at which point she asked that they build her a house. The family was incapable of helping her, which upset her. After that visit, she stopped having anything to do with the family and dropped off the face of the earth. But it sounds like her family kind of did an intervention, reached out as a unit to her to try to bring her back into the family and it sounds almost like she was demanding that they build her a house this would you know get her back into their good graces and they just couldn't do it so she you know got mad about that Her brothers and sisters continued to look for her into the 1990s. They hired a private detective but had no luck. They received no word about her whereabouts until the cold case investigators reached out to them. I'm sure that she had worked and I'm sure that she had neighbors, maybe friends, people that she was interactive with. Um... Did anyone come forward to tell anything about her life and what made her choose to die in the way that she did? Joyce Meyer was born July the 13th, 1927. She was the oldest of three girls and two boys. Raised on a farm outside of Davenport, Iowa. She attended Iowa State University and later moved to Los Angeles where she lived with an aunt while working for Seventeen Magazine. She left Seventeen Magazine in the 1950s and began teaching school at a Catholic school. Um, now, it says she began to have confrontation with her mother over perceived abuse as a child that she said um, was brought out during her time of seeing a psychoanalyst. This alienated her from her family as her other siblings claimed these claims were false. Um, and there was very little else. Public records show that she had lived in Northern Virginia, possibly around Alexandria in 1996. The records show an address for her in downtown Washington, D.C., it doesn't go into the details about what claims she made about abuse that drove her from her family. So she died December the 18th, 1996. So she'd probably been living in this area for around 10 years or so. Um, maybe some people did come forward at the time and say they had not seen her. Because keep in mind, this woman died and no one knew who she was. Did no one in her... Was this located near where she was supposed to have been living? Did did anyone notice she's moved out of her home? We haven't seen her around her home. Um, or had she become homeless? I don't know. She was dressed somewhat, you know, nice. She had on nice clothing. So... They don't really go into a lot of detail about that. That just adds to this mystery. Um, not having anyone in her life, not uh, having been estranged from her family, 
having divorced her husband. Not I don't know that she didn't have any uh, other relationships or anything, but maybe she just felt very lonely and depressed, and maybe this was just, you know... Someone here comments, I live not far from the cemetery where she was found, and I have been to the cemetery to visit. She just didn't get off the bus, train, or metro and walk to Pleasant Valley Memorial. She must have been staying or living in that area for a period of time. However, she would have needed some kind of income because this area was very expensive. She would not have been able to afford to rent a townhouse in northwest Washington, D.C. in 1996 for peanuts. It was high then, and it's even higher today. So I'll just wrap up this video by saying that this woman, she was the oldest of five children. Um, none of the other children ever said that there was any abuse in the home, and she doesn't go into any detail. Now, she did write a book called The Target Child, so you may be able to find that somewhere on eBay or Google it and see what the book was about, supposedly about abuse that she suffered. And I don't know if she says that the rest of the family suffered this abuse or not. Being that she was the oldest of five kids, it could be that she felt abused because maybe she was having to do some of the workload in caring for the younger kids and maybe she just felt that that was somewhat abusive. I don't know if she goes into detail about if it was physical abuse or what, but she seemed to have lived a pretty productive life, and she traveled quite a bit. They said at one time she lived in Canada, California, Arizona, Iowa, and finally in Virginia. Some of the siblings said that they just stopped writing to her because she wouldn't really ever write back. Whatever was going on in her life in the last 10 years or so when she was living in Virginia before she decided to take her own life, there's not really a, a, a trail that I could find. I couldn't really find much of anything. So that's really all I could find about her. And it was just a very sad ending to her life sad that she didn't reconcile with her brothers and sisters and, um, and she chose to take her own life in this way by suffocating herself in a cemetery surrounded by graves of little children. Some people suggest that maybe at some point she had lost a baby. Um, I don't know. There, there was no record of that and of course maybe there wouldn't be but um, Thanks for watching.